week that was out. This is called, and the cover was, he this is the last one, right? Heaven. No, it isn't the last one. Close to the last it one. It would have been the last one if you'd had your way. I know. <laughs> I, I, I really because objected to this. Heaven. I thought, I, I know, we had a Twitter fight. I, I wrote, Newsweek has Heaven is Real on the cover. If this is what it takes to stay in business, just stop. Better dead than sad. Yeah. And you wrote back, tweeted back, fortunately for you, Bill Maher, hell is real too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have to and say. By the way, ju just for you that today, we posted a piece on the Daily Beast about l afterlife as hell, because not many people seem to go to hell when they have these afterlife experiences, but some do. Well, I'm going to get you in on this in yeah. a second, but uh, just to catch me what on this. This is a, a doctor. He was a neurosurgeon. Correct. Not a neuroscientist. Okay, mm -hmm. big difference. Who's, he had a he had a meningitis induced coma. Mm -hmm. So he was out, and he said while he was out, he had a near death experience. Let me read some of his what he said happened in his book Heaven Is Real that you printed here. He said, "I was a speck on a beautiful butterfly wing." <laughs> Millions of other butterflies around us. We were flying through blooming flowers. Newspaper taxis appeared on the shore. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> You are a Rocking miserable, horse miserable horse people were eating man. marshmallow pies. The girl had kaleidoscope eyes. Okay, we're mixing those two. But the first part is what he said, and this is where this bothers me so much. Because heaven, I mean, Doc, please help me out. Well, look, I mean, it's so, it is ridiculous. I, the point is that, so you're deprived of oxygen, and what are you going to do? I mean, I, I, you may have had similar experiences in other cases where your metabolism has been changed. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Most and, and, and the point is, why, you know, the problem, the problem with making, you know, the problem with journalism and science like that is that, is that you know, you're trying to have, make two sides to every story, but the thing about science is, most often, right. one side is wrong. Right. But he, <laughs> you know, yeah. now look, he, he was a man. The, the author of this piece is the neurosurgeon. He was a man of hard science. And the whole point of this no. piece is, the but whole you know, point of the piece is that he, in all those CAT, CAT scans, his brain was completely dead. No. And he makes no. the point. That's not possible. Well, this no, is, okay. I'm just you know, telling that's you. That's the, the point. You know, the easiest, Richard Feynman, who's a famous scientist, said the easiest person to fool is yourself. When something happens right. to you, you suddenly feel like it's significant. He used to go around everyone and saying, you won't believe what happened to me today. You won't believe what happened to me. And people would say, what? And he'd say, Absolutely nothing. Because, I mean, when, you know, you can dream a million stupid dreams, and then one day you dream your sister's arm is going to break and her leg breaks, and you think, aha, I'm clairvoyant. I think These actually, in happen. fairness, no. the piece is really about expanded conscious. It's really about... I know, but, but it's based on bullshit, because <laughs> he, he's saying... <laughs> What he said Very was that his cerebral cortex shut down. It was completely offline. And every neuroscientist says that's brain death, yeah. which is a 100% lethal condition. Yeah, you don't what back. probably happened is that he was put on a surgical anesthetic, DMT they call it, ketamine is once, I, when I think I did that in college. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he had a dynamite dream, which you have when you're coming back online and you're on a surgical And some of them are good dreams or some drug. of them are bad dreams. Your good dreams heaven, the bad dreams are hell. I mean, the it's, point is know. that it was a very profound, life-changing experience for him. And I'm I sure think it was. But it it's makes... a pretty gripping read. I mean, it's well, the it, only time know, but, but that I have the... ever felt sort of moved by a piece, actually, but I'm in sure this area. It wasn't a woo-woo piece. As real to him as anything. I'm not denying that to him it felt real. Hallucinations are real to people who hallucinate. <laughs> no, they really are. Well, Bill will know about that. We're trying to move away from being the anti-science country. This is the what way? Well, well, uh, well, eighty percent of people in America are, or north of that have have religious beliefs. And almost that many are Christians. So I think you know the it, this. I don't think it's properly described as journalism. This piece. <laughs> this guy is reporting that he had a subjective experience. But I don't think we're as a country trying to get away from religion. Most people believe that. Well, it's decreasing real. though. Happily, actually, no matter what people say, it's actually the number of people who claim yes. at least affiliation with any Certainly. organization is happy. Especially the market. young people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, but access you know, to these people. But he's not necessarily but, describing okay. a religious experience. He describes a spiritual experience, and it is powerful and it is moving. And I think we cannot deny that people feel and experience these things. And oh, I, okay. the experiences feel real. I, I, lots of people have spiritual experiences, and that's. We, we should celebrate that. I have one when I look at the Hubble Space Telescope images and, and see galaxies that are 10 billion light years away with civilizations that are long gone. I mean, to me, that's a, people say science isn't spiritual, but to me it's more spiritual because it's actually real. Well, I feel that way about... Okay. As I'm sure... I feel that way about Richard III. I, <laughs> I do.